I've been known by many names over the years. Ra Krishna. Yahweh. Hello, boy. That was a weird intro. But oh well. Uh, last night I got to see X Men Apocalypse, and I'm here to give you my, essentially my review for that film. And uh, yeah, like for me, this was my most anticipated movie of the year. I was really excited. I'm really fascinated to see this movie. But it was like you know about two weeks ago, the critics came out with their reviews for the movie. They weren't too good. The, the reviews were too good, and I'm like, oh no. Because I was like really, really personally anticipating this movie. So, two full weeks of agony and anticipation and build up. I'm just like, you want fuck the critics. I want, I want to see this film, and this being my most anticipated movie of the year. That's right, more than Doctor Strange, more than the new Harry Potter movie, more than Star Wars. This is my most anticipated movie of the year. And I finally got to see it. And I literally came out of the theater doing this to the critics. Because I really, really don't know why people don't like this movie. Um, oh my god, just personally speaking, I loved the story of this movie. I loved, it was a bit typical, you know, like an uh, ancient type of ruler of, the, of an ancient world is coming back. And essentially, you know, trying to wreak havoc on the world, trying to cleanse it. It's like, you know what, I want to create this, the survival of the strongest type of mentality. And it's like, I will take the strongest with me. Only we can live, we can, only we can adapt to the world type of mentality. And it's trying to get the strongest mutants out there and eliminating and destroying and weakest. And the new, and the new order of the X-Men has to come together and take them down. But everyone else, of the main characters of them, like, Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique, um, Fassbender as Magneto, and um, James McAvoy as Xavier were all doing their own things. Magneto is in Poland, his trying to raise a family, and uh, you know, Jennifer Lawrence is doing their own thing, kind of like recruiting new mutants essentially and everyone and it's like every mutant out there is like really inspired by mystique and um xavier is in this school at, or slash university in new york and he's trying to you know like really introduce people to becoming to getting to the new school of his of mutants being accepted and among others within the within the and it seemed like everyone was kind of doing what they wanted to do I like that. I really love that dynamic there. The three, and of course, like the discovery and the rising of Apocalypse. I found this to be a really interesting, clever, and ambitious film from my own perspective. Not only was it fascinating, fun, and, ed and, and entertaining, but I was emotionally and mentally engaged the whole time. I was never bored. I was always fascinated. Even though I will say the beginning, I'll say the first 10, 20 minutes were a bit weird and iffy, I was never bored. I was never under, I was never like, oh my god, kill me. Like, it was still entertaining. I was still fascinated with the film itself. And it seemed like it was just blowing up all the way through. It felt like one of those rare movies where every single scene was really building up. I felt like every moment was actually getting better within the film. Films tend to either lose theme or just be, or just like a stalemate throughout it as a whole. But I love the factor and I love the idea that this movie was just building up and it felt like it had the best of the best of the franchise within this one movie. Kind of like how I kind of felt with uh, last year's uh, James Bond Spectre, where that had the best of Bond into one movie, even though a lot of people didn't like that. But I still felt it was still very good. Even though I, my, I still hold my opinion that I still really love, that I still really enjoy Spectre. It may have his poems, but you know what? Yada yada yada. And, um, I'm going to say something that may be a bit controversial. But I'm going to say it anyway. This is mm, not just my favorite movie of this year. You know, aside from this Batman v Superman, 
stinks in my opinion. Deadpool and Captain America, which are both freaking amazing. This movie is my favorite super movie. No, this is my favorite super movie of this year. This is my favorite film of this year so far. Not only was it entertaining and fascinating, but so engrossing and learning, and you got to see more of the evolution of the characters, and it seemed like it had the best of the franchise, like, you know, moments from, not too much of a spoiler, but from Alkali Lake, and certain good little timbits, and the little throwbacks for the nerds and the fans of the franchise from the comics as well. It felt so great and grounded in this world. Everyone in this movie was fantastic. There's a particular moment in the forest early on in the movie with Fa Michael Fassbender and his as Magneto and with his family that I can't give too much away even though I'm not going to make a spoiler video for this movie because I find that really way too repetitive. Unless you, maybe, I don't know for sure. I might. I might. Um, essentially, at that moment, I'm just like, this really, that moment to me in the forest was like, this is really interesting. This is really, I thought like the best of the best of the franchise here. Not to mention, the new cast in this movie was awesome. Cody Smith McPhee as Nightcrawler was great. I feel like he was channeling the old Alan Cumming from Alan Cummings from the X-Men 2, which I thought was awesome. You know, he was still trying to do his own little thing as well. I thought he was great. Ty Sheridan as um, Cyclops, I thought he was great. Uh, Alexander Strip as uh, Storm. I thought she was great. I liked how she did have an accent in the movie, even though it was, it was Egyptian, not African. I mean, I don't know. Oh well. Uh, also, Olivia Munn as Psyche. As Psyche? <laughs> well, yeah. And uh, Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse. I thought for the Apocalypse and his Four Horsemen, and the Four Horsemen, Fastbender, um, Harkin. Archangel, um, Storm, and Psyche. I thought they all had great reasons why they wanted to become, or they wanted to be on the ship. You know, like Storm can kind of view them as a savior to her. Like, he saved her in the moment when she needed. For Psyche, it was, I forgot what reason it was for, but you know what? My memory. <laughs> I don't know. But, and also, uh, you also have, between characters, and Peters was fantastic. His role in this movie, oh my god, was it awesome. And as a whole, at least in my opinion, um, I don't know, just kind of bug it up my computer. You know, it's got to uh, but my favorite new cover in this movie, for me at least, is Sophie Turner as Jean Grey. I love her in this movie. And in a fun, like, she has such an energy burning inside of her. I love, you know, you know, like, when you first see her, you're kind of like, oh, you're kind of going like that, aren't you? Like, the dialogue from her is a bit weird, admittingly. But you kind of get the feeling of, like, you know, she's still just stepping into the role. And I thought she was still really good. Some of the dialogue coming from her was a bit odd. Like, it was the way she delivered it was a bit weird, admittedly, but you know what? I still really enjoyed it. Um, Rose Byrne is returning this movie, and I loved her, Lucas Till, and all these other actors, and then Peters. Oh my god. Oh my freaking god. Evan Peters' scene in this movie tops the scene in Days of Future Past. They top the scene in Days of Future Past. I'm like, oh my god, this, oh my god, yes, 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 and I love that. The slow motion scene of him in this movie, especially when it's played to the song of Sweet Dreams by the Arithmetics, is fantastic. I love that. That was a great song choice to go along with it, in my opinion. And Oscar Isaac was intimidating, scary, but also... He was great. He was intimidating and he was scary in the movie. But at the very least, I could still see why people would want to be a part of him. Why they would want to go to him. Like, he's not like a straight cookie-cutter villain. And yes, he has those big monologuing speeches, which kind of does admittedly get repetitive. I will admit that. 
Oh, fully, mate. He, his speeches do get a bit rep repetitive. I'm like, yeah, we know, we know, we know. We know. The fucking apocalypse. Shut up. There's a couple moments like that, but you know what? There's still such an essence that you can still see why people want to go, go to him. He saved Storm in a certain moment when she needed to be saved. And that is like, from that moment, you kind of were like, okay, I would still also be swayed by that. So, you know. Um. And I still really love that as whole. Um, not to mention, I felt like the movie was just getting better with every scene. It felt like it was trusting you. The writing was so interesting, and so ambitious, and the plot was so ambitious as well. That I thought every single scene and every single set piece wasn't just a set piece. And there's a certain cameo. Okay, I made a, a spoiler video. Okay, I don't know for sure if I make a spoiler video, video or not, to be honest. But you know what? I made a video like two a week or two back talking about the latest trailer, and in that video, I said I won't spoil it here if you haven't seen it yet. But there's a certain cameo. Oh my god, it's fantastic! And yes, they do go to Alkali Lake, which I thought was actually a, a great welcome return for me. I love that addition. Oh my god, I'm talk I want to talk about it so much, even though I talked about it in the trailer. Okay, if you've seen my trailer review, okay, you might know, from well, fuck it. I won't bring it up then, because it's it's a big spoiler. But whatever. Um, but I loved these new characters. I loved the new cast, the old cast, the dialogue. I love how it built up everything towards a great big climactic end. So much for me, I just loved watching this movie as a whole. I was so thoroughly entertained, I was so thoroughly fascinated. Is there any downfalls? I have two. Number one, while I did still enjoy, thoroughly enjoy the beginning, I felt like it was a bit iffy. I'm like, okay, where's the footing for the movie? Where's it finally trying to punctuate it in? It's like, okay, this is a grasp hold of the movie, and we're going on from here. I felt like the beginning, while, while still good, was a bit iffy, I will say. And in the end, like the big climactic action scene in the movie, while there was some moments of fantastic effects, there was still some moments of some effects that I thought were I thought were that were a bit obvious. Like there's some pretty not good CG in the, in the movie. I admit, in the later action half finale in the movie, like there's moments where it's fantastic, but there's some moments where you're just like, oh, that's so freaking obvious. Yeah. But you know what, off a, off a scale of what I've enjoyed, and how it's cool, as a whole, for me, at least speaks to me as a fan, and also a movie critic, I love this movie. I straight up loved it. And in my personal rating system, I am not afraid, while I will say it's not perfect, I'm still going to give it a perfect rating. I'm going to give X-Men Apocalypse a hundred percent. That's my rating, everyone. I really do hope you enjoy it. And stick around, as always, to see my reviews coming from me in the future. Till then, everyone. Thank you for watching, and I will see you till then. And remember, mutant and proud.